Hello, this is Heinlein's Children, the series of interviews commemorating the 25th anniversary of Robert Heinlein's passing, sponsored by Bayon Books and produced by the Space Frontier Foundation. I am Dr. Kiki Sanford of This Week in Science, and I will be your host. Our guest today, Mr. Mark L. Van Name, is a writer, technologist, and spoken word performer. As a science fiction author, he has published five novels, One Jump Ahead, Slanted Jack, Overthrowing Heaven, Children No More, and No Going Back, as well as an omnibus collection of his first two books. He's also edited or co-edited many anthologies and written several short stories. Additionally, he recently authored the foreword for the upcoming release of The Man Who Sold the Moon. What drew you to writing first? I mean, as a as a passion and something that you could really get into, um, and then specifically, what drew you to science fiction? I grew up uh, with a single mother who was very much a reader. There were books on the shelves. I can't remember a time when reading wasn't something that was valued at my house. And so, uh, I grew up reading stories, and we had a, a storytelling family. So I grew up wanting to tell stories, and uh, I was one of those weird kids who always saw something potentially different, you know, what's in that shadow, you know, what if we were somewhere else, what if was always a big question, and so I think I came to science fiction because it was um, an exploration of those things, it was a, a way into those different worlds. And I grew up very poor and in not the best settings, and so, I, like many people, science fiction and fantasy were escapes for me. Mm-hmm. Plus, the one of the very first books I read uh, when I was about four years old was the collected stories of Sherlock Holmes. And I view Sherlock Holmes as my first science fiction, because Holmes's approach to the world, this very fact-based, stare at everything, think about it, note all the evidence, struck me as very scientific. And, uh, you know, the gap from Holmes to Spock in Star Trek, not a very big leap. I love that. I don't think I've ever made the connection between Sherlock Holmes and Spock from Star Trek, but it's never going to leave me now. (laughs) What is Heinlein's most well-known attribute uh, uh, related to science fiction, and, and why do you think that is? I'd be hard-pressed to say one answer, because Heinlein had so many influences on so many groups. I, I have friends who would answer that question by saying he's a libertarian politics. Yeah. I uh, have other friends who would answer that by saying uh, space exploration. Others would talk about stories and just commitment to a sense of wonder. And for me, I would say that what drew me most to Heinlein was his passion, which is not something most people talk about. Uh, I have an afterward I've written to a a Heinlein collection that's coming out in September from Bain, and in it I talk about Heinlein as a very passionate writer, and I think you see that not so much in the way he talks about it or he writes about passion, but that whatever he's writing about at a time, whatever he's really into, he's into it, and he writes with an absolute definitive surety. You know, he knows what he knows, and he's very excited about what he's into, and then those passions change over time. So the Heinlein of uh, the, the Man Who Sold the Moon mm-hmm. is not the same Heinlein of The Moon is a Harsh Mistress uh, or of Stranger in a Strange Land. Ron. How did Heinlein specifically influence your work? First, I think that Heinlein is a storyteller uh, above all else. He tells a good story. Mm-hmm. He keeps you moving along. He makes you interested and he'll take risks to do that. He'll do a lot of writing, writing things that are uh, tips and tricks that are a little bit different than what you'd normally tell someone, but he makes it work. And so for me, he was one of the formative writers that made me really want to do stories. Um, he also gave me a strong sense of what good characters ought to be doing, the responsibility they should be taking. Um, and of course, you know, he, he made outer space sexy, you know, he, <laughs> he made it go from that idle tickle in the back of your head to something that occupies the front of your head. We realize that's very important stuff. 
So that's interesting. What kinds of stories do you like to tell, and are they significantly different from the kinds that Heinlein would tell? Uh, one thing that was a direct influence on me was that I, I really loved Heinlein's future history. I loved the notion of a future history. I loved the whole idea that somebody was working in this consistent thing, and it might be one story here and one story here and another story in a different point in time, but that you were seeing it. And so when I started the John and Lobo series, I very consciously set out to do a future history, but I wanted to do a different kind of history. If you read the history books, you get what the victors wrote for your culture. So our history books of, say, the Cold War are very different than I expected the Russian history books are. And I wanted to more write a memoir approach so that it was one person moving through time, seeing historic events happen, but seeing them from his perspective. Where we're different are the, the primarily centers around the issues that matter to us. I have my own obsessions and uh, Heinlein's are different. I write a lot, not always consciously, but I write a lot about victims of abuse. Mm. Um, and I'm defining abuse in the broadest sense here. So I write about uh, child abuse victims. I write about rape victims. I write about uh, veterans and PTSD suffering. You know, I write a lot about very damaged people. Uh, they are frequently very competent, but to me, um, their stories need to be told. Uh, it makes them interesting as characters. Mm. Uh, I was an abused kid, and that's an area that's informed me. And I also think that it's something that's important to put in the public eye. I believe that as a culture, we like to hide from painful topics like rape, uh, like child abuse, uh, and like what veterans have to do to uh, survive and, and to carry out the orders of politicians who aren't there, who aren't fighting. Whether it is uh, rape or child abuse, for example, the most common thing they hear when they try to tell somebody significant to them is, aren't you over that? Why are you telling me about that? What did you do to cause that? Right. And it makes me furious. And I write about that because the answer is they didn't do anything to cause it. Yep. You know, it is never the fault of the rape victim. It is never the fault of the child who was abused. I think it's great to be able to put those kinds of cultural uh cultural themes into your writing. So it makes whatever you're working on that much more personal to the reader that maybe someone who has been abused can can find uh, something to relate to in there or people who've never heard about it or have any idea what it's like to be someone who's uh, gone through a terrible damaging experience can get a little bit of an idea. Moving into the question of um, the influence that science fiction has had on technology development and our drive to explore space. Like you said, you know, Heinlein has been incredibly influential in that, you know, his stories about the moon and, and others. Where do you see, as, as you as a technologist, where do you see Heinlein's con continuing mark on technology and the space race? Well, there's, there are a lot of problems here on Earth. There, you can make a very good case that we shouldn't be spending our money on anything except those problems. And I, I understand that case. It's not the case I make. I think we should. I think we have the resources to do it all, and I think we should be continuing to invest. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people and governments, uh, but a lot more and more in the private sector, that are doing that. And so, whether it's SpaceX or any other enterprise. Uh, People are walking ground that Heinlein blazed, and sometimes they are aware of that, and sometimes they are indebted to it without being aware of it. But I think the influence that he had is really big. And, you know, uh, yeah. it's, there, are, there, there are fundamental things about his work that are very much in the spirit of America of that time. But Heinlein believed in, his, in the works, particularly the work, about the space world, that a single person with enough determination, with enough passion, can go help change the world. Yeah, right now I think we need to keep inspiring people to believe that, too. There, there are still so many problems that we do face. I agree. Yeah. Um, 
I have one final question for you. In 1976, Ray Bradbury wrote Heinlein to thank him for his influence. Nice handwritten letter that um, that has been found and shared with the world. If you could personally thank Heinlein for his influence on your career today or even on anything, what would you say? Great question, obviously. Sorry for the pause. I'm usually ready. Uh, <laughs> I would want to put some care into that letter. Uh, I would not want to dash off an email. But I guess if uh, on the spot here, what I would have to say is that I would thank him for helping create all the worlds in which the rest of us get to live and work. I. I wrote uh, in the afterward I mentioned the opening sentence. I, I don't recall it exactly, but it is something like the man who sold the moon helped save my life. And it really did. And I would thank him for that. And that would be a very personal thing. And for that, I'll refer you to the book. Uh, it's yeah. the combined edition of the man who sold the moon and orphans of the sky. And I don't want to undercut the afterward because then I'm undercutting my publisher's sales and she wouldn't she correctly wouldn't like that but the book will be out and and it would be a very personal thank you because that story in particular really did help save my life I mean quite literally and and you can read about it and it had to do with my the abuse I was suffering at the time but that story helped uh, change my life well, I think if anyone could have an influence I think that's one of the best kinds that that someone can have definitely Thank you so much for your time. It's been really great speaking with you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you to Mark Van Name, Bayon Books for sponsoring this series of interviews and the Space Frontier Foundation dedicated to supporting the settlement and development of outer space. Click on the links below to help them donating to the cause. Be sure to look for Peter, Peter Diamandis, the Heinlein Prize Trust, and other videos in the series. I'm Dr. Kiki. Thank you for watching. Living in the night time